Back in Britain in the late 80s, early 90s, it was a lot quicker and cheaper to make video games than it is today. Because of that, developers would often pump out any old crap to see what stuck, and if they could get their hands on a cheap license for a popular TV show of the time, even better. Trouble is, this often led to the release of games of rather questionable quality. So without further ado, I'm Eurogamer's Ian Higton, and this is my list of five crappy games based on obscure British TV shows. While our American cousins were able to grow up with a smile on their faces thanks to the hilarious school hall antics of Saved by the Bell, Zach Morris and co, us Brits had to make do with watching Zamo Maguire overdose on heroin in cheerful tea time kids drama Grange Hill. Zamo! Now, producing a video game based on a TV show set in a school seems like a no-brainer to me, considering one of the best games available on the ZX Spectrum at the time was Naughty Boy Simulator School Days. Instead of following suit though, Grange Hill decided to ditch the majority of the school rebellion stuff for gameplay akin to Dizzy crossed with a text adventure. Starring Luke Gonch Gardner and Paul Hollow Holloway, the aim of the game was simple. Break into school to retrieve Gonch's personal stereo before his mum finds out it's missing and gives him a proper bollocking. While the game reviewed well at the time, the worst thing about it was how it completely wasted the licence by failing to use the signature Grange Hill theme tune as the soundtrack. Worse still, there's not even a flying sausage in sight. Sacrilege! Disappointing soundtrack aside, Grange Hill the Game is perhaps best known for carrying on the heavy anti-drugs message of the TV show by featuring one of the darkest Game Over screens ever. Wander onto a certain patch of wasteland and our heroes will bump into a shifty man in a leather jacket who offers to sell them a packet of white powder. If you choose to talk to the pusher you'll hear this lovely bit of sampled speech Just say no before you make your choice. Say yes to the pusher and the following text appears. There is an empty look in his eyes as he snatches the money from your hand. His face is pale and drawn, his body thin and unfed. He steals to keep his habit and he makes addicts of children. He is dead and soon you will be too. Jesus. Listen very carefully, I shall say this only once. So in a small Nazi-occupied town in southern France, LOLO was a popular British sitcom that ran for about ten years. Starring French cafe owner and serial affair haver René, the show featured wacky plots that revolved around downed English fighter pilots, pervy Gestapo officers and a painting of the fallen Madonna who was blessed with some rather big assets which seems a rather odd premise for a TV show, looking back on it. It might come as a bit of a surprise then to learn that Alternative Software released a video game adaption of the series for the Amiga in 1993 called Allo Allo Cartoon Fun. While the artists on the game managed to create impressively accurate caricatures of the show's cast, the rest of cartoon fun was unfortunately pretty shoddy. Opting for the side-scrolling platforming genre that was all the rage on the Amiga at the time, the gameplay boiled down to a simple exercise in bouncing and collecting, with a bit of Nazi avoiding and bra stealing thrown in for good measure. Turns out there's a good reason why a game called Cartoon Fun lacked any fun whatsoever though. A couple of months into its six to eight month development period, the main coder on the project, a Mr. William Gibbs, upped and quit Alternative and left them with a half-finished game. Alternative tried to salvage the project by bringing in a new coder to finish the job, but unfortunately the change in programmers is evident in the final product, which not only looks pretty rough, but also, unforgivably for a platformer, controls like utter pants. <laughs> What a mistake of the maker! Legend has it that no LOLO reference material was obtained from the BBC when Alternative developed the game, which explains why the show's much-loved title music has been replaced by whatever the hell this god-awful racket is. At least the game has a happy ending, with René and Yvette eloping to England to live, we can only assume, happily ever after. We don't know, because the story just cuts off at that point to make room for the high score table. Oh, whack. 
if you grew up in a country that never had Nightmare, you missed out. Big time. As a kid in the UK in the late 80s, early 90s, there were two TV shows you were guaranteed to want to be on. Pat Sharp's Fun House was one of them, the other was of course Nightmare. Welcome Watchers of Illusion. Nightmare is legendary in the UK, an adventure game come to life that blended teamwork, puzzle solving and fantastical action with, for the time, incredible special effects that were achieved through a creative mix of early CGI and blue screen technology. In the show, a team of four children, one a sightless dungeoneer, the others acting as guides, navigated their way through a series of hostile environments whilst a dungeon master named Treyguard looked on, providing hints, tips and the occasional sick burn. Ooh, nasty. The ZX Spectrum version of Nightmare followed the formula pretty faithfully, putting the player in the role of not only the dungeoneer, but also the guides giving the orders. While the gameplay itself was rather simple, move the dungeoneer around each room and use a combination of command words to trigger an exit, the solutions themselves were not. For a large portion of the audience, the solutions to the puzzles were just too obscure, with many players becoming stuck in just the second room. With no internet to help find the solution, most people just thought the game was broken, but chances were they'd accidentally made the game unwinnable for themselves by eating an important quest item in the first room. You see, to get out of the second room, players had to use the command dig ground, but to successfully do that, they needed a spade. The spade, hidden I guess up the bum of the prisoner in the first room, was only awarded to the player if they gave said prisoner the food. You eat the food, you get no spade, and in turn, you break the game. Brilliant QA testing there, lads. I gotta give some bonus points to Nightmare though, because it's one of the few games on this list to actually feature the theme tune of the show that inspired it. Sort of. <laughs> Alright, so technically this next game isn't based on a TV show, but it is based on an obscure character from British TV that only people of a certain age will remember. And it's a really crappy game as well, so it fits into this list perfectly. Ed the Duck was a children's BBC mascot who lived in the CBBC broom cupboard alongside presenters Andy Crane and Andy Peters during the late 80s and early 90s. This little duck with his signature bright green mohawk proved to be quite a hit amongst the viewers and soon spawned spin-off comic strips, milkshakes and in 1990 his very own computer game on the Spectrum, C64 and Amstrad. The Amiga port shown here was released a year later and just like the other versions it was a clumsy Rainbow Islands clone that lacked the polish and most importantly the amazing gameplay of the game it was trying to emulate. The aim of the game was to guide Ed to the top of several vertically scrolling levels, each with a different theme and different enemies to contend with. These levels were called TV studios and were definitely not in any way shape or form islands. Honest gov. <laughs> In order to avoid a potentially costly plagiarism lawsuit, the developers also had to make some gameplay changes in order to further differentiate the game from Rainbow Islands. So instead of having Ed fire rainbows from his crotch like the characters in Tato's hit game did, they opted for something slightly different. Snowballs. Snowballs have nothing to do with Ed the Duck lore, by the way. I mean, it's not like he was well known for throwing them or anything. I guess the powers that be were just too lazy to think past the whole weather angle and so opted for balls of ice rather than colourful refractions of light. For a game that was supposedly aimed at kids, the Amiga version was bastard hard thanks to its poor controls and the fact that enemies were only ever momentarily stunned by Ed's balls and not downright defeated by them. Even then though, it wasn't as hard as the ZX Spectrum version, which, due to a bug, was actually impossible to complete. You see, in order to pass each level, you had to have collected 20 stars before you reached the top. But level 7, well, that only contained 19 stars, leaving that level, and in turn, the whole game, completely unbeatable. What a massive duck up. <laughs> If ever there was an obscure British TV show, it was this one. 
Supergran was a weekly kids show that told the story of one Granny Smith, aka Supergran, who had superpowers bestowed upon her after she was accidentally zapped by a crazy scientist's malfunctioning invention. The superpowered Scottish Nana, of course, used her newfound powers for good. Unfortunately for fans of the series, developers Tynesoft used her powers for evil and created one of the worst games ever made. Featuring four different levels, or sheets as the game calls them, each one more inept than the last, Supergran is a masterclass in how not to program a game. Level 1, for instance, featured Supergran on the back of a flying bicycle, shooting down other people on flying bicycles. A sound, if bizarre idea in theory. But in practice, things weren't so great. One-hit kills and crappy collision detection combined with a small screen made getting past this level extremely aggravating. But at least giving up there would mean not having to play the rest of the game, I guess. Subsequent levels involved flying, driving and Manic Miner style platforming, but each one was a total mess and nigh on unplayable. Oh, and every level except the driving level is accompanied by a teeth-grindingly terrible rendition of the show's theme tune, which loops over and over and over again. Seriously, a couple of minutes worth of this and you'll be reaching for your own Grand's Knitting Needles just so you can stab your eardrums out and end the pain once and for all. Honestly, the game is abysmal and the sooner someone puts this Super Gran into a super home, the better. And that's my list of five crappy games based on obscure British TV shows done. If you think I missed any, or if there's any other crappy games you want me to cover on future shows, do let me know in the comments below. And if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to Eurogamer for plenty more video gamey goodness. Now, I'm just going to sit here for the rest of the time and uh, let you choose another list video to watch. There's three there and the little subscribe button up there so uh yeah take your time it's about 20 seconds okay, it's probably about five now and so i'll just wait it's fine yeah